Hi traders, welcome back to Zen and the Art of Trading. Today I'm going to be covering basic inputs in PineScript. This is lesson three in my PineScript tutorial course. So if you haven't seen the other videos, you might want to go back and watch them unless you're a little bit experienced with PineScript. So let's get straight into this one. I'm going to start with a blank script here. All I've done is change the script name to lesson three. What I'm going to do here is just show you how to use all the basic inputs. I'm not going to go over timeframes and sessions and symbols. I'm just going to go over the basics such as number inputs, um, Boolean inputs, which means true or false, uh, float inputs, which is just floating point numbers, decimal place numbers, and string inputs, which is just text inputs. I'm going to plot all these inputs onto the chart to show you how to use them in the script. We're not going to actually do anything with these values. I'm just going to show you how to get input from the user. These concepts will come back later in future lessons. So it's very important that we go over these now, get it out of the way. And then some of you more advanced users can start playing around with them yourself in the meantime. So let's start with Boolean input. The Boolean input is set to the input function. And we're going to call it Boolean. It's going to be type we're going to set its type to input dot and then you can press control space here if you forgot about that and it'll list all of the inputs here we're going to go with bool input dot bool and then the default value def val is going to be set to true and obviously you can set this to whatever you want true or false so in order to plot the boolean to our chart there's no way to plot a true or false value to the chart because there's no way to visually represent that other than using numbers. So we could use a one for true and a zero for false. That's what I'm gonna do in this example. And now the way to plot this, the easiest way to plot this is using what is called a conditional operator. Now this is a little bit advanced, but it's not that advanced and it's very useful to know. So I'm gonna teach you that in this lesson. So in programming, there's what we call if statements. So the way that would work is we type if, and then next we put in a Boolean value. So in this case, we'd write Boolean input. Now this next line will not be executed unless the Boolean value is true. So an example of that would be this. If I were to write data equals say negative one, here we could say if the Boolean input is true, we could set the data value to one. And now if we change this to plot that data value and I save the script and I add it to my chart, you'll see it's plotting one because data was set to negative one, but because this is set to true, the script changed data to one. Now, if we go into the settings menu here and we turn this off, it's now plotting as negative one. You see down here on the right axis. An easy way to do this is to use what's called a conditional operator. So what we can do here is we can say plot Boolean input question mark. Now what this is saying is that if this value is true, if this Boolean is set to true, then we want to plot one. And then if you do a colon symbol, and then you write say zero on the other side, what this is going to do if I click save, it's gonna do exactly the same thing here. It's gonna plot uh, this line as one because this value is set to true. And now if I change this to false, it'll plot as zero. Watch on the right axis. And there you go, it's plotting as zero. So that's the power of these conditional operators. They can really save you some time. You don't have to write out all that code we did earlier. You just, just write it out in this format here. Now we're gonna change this to plot in the color red so that we can differentiate this from the other inputs that I'm about to show you. So that's the first input value. And you can see we can play around with that here in the settings menu now, and it will adjust the plotted value. The next example is gonna be an integer input, which is, which is just any whole number. So if I say integer input is set to input function with the title of integer, and the type is input dot integer and the default value is let's say because this is one and zero we don't want to plot another one so we'll set this to two and then if i come down here and i type in plot integer input 
We don't need to do any conditional values here. There's no if or else about this. It's just a straight up number input. And we'll set the color to, this time we'll set it to blue. If I click save, that'll update the script. And there you go. We've got two plotted up here in blue and we've got one plotted down here in red, which is our Boolean input and our integer input. So there, very simple to get these inputs from the user. If we go up to the settings menu, you can see you can change this now. You can change it to one and then it paints over the top of our Boolean value. If I change it to zero, it plots below it. So I'll leave that as two for now. The next example is going to be a float input. So if I type in float input is set to input function, title is float. The type is input.float. And the default value in this case is going to be, let's say 1.5. If I come down, we've got to plot it to the chart. So plot float input and the color is set to color.purple this time. Why not? Click save. And there we have it. We've got our three input functions plotting to the chart right now. We can go into the settings and we can fool around with this, change it to 0 0.5, 1.1, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Pun not intended. Um, all right, next input is string. We're gonna go with a little bit of text here. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit advanced as well because the only way to plot text to your chart is to use a label function. Um, that's quite an advanced topic. So just focus on the input section here. Um, you more advanced programmers can play around with the label function later, but this is a bit of a taste of what's to come, I guess, for, for future lessons. So this is the last in base. This is the last basic input that we're going to cover here. There's a lot more advanced inputs. If I type in input control space, we're not going to go over resolution, session, source, or symbol in this video. I'm going to go over those inputs in a future video. The reason for that is that these to plot these to your chart it requires quite a bit of complex Pine scripts compared to what we're writing here. And I don't want to overload you guys when we're only on lesson three. So let's get this string input working. So I'm going to call this input string and it's going to be type input dot string. The default value is going to be, let's just call it some text. And now, we need to use what's called an array. An array is basically a collection of values. Um, in this case, it has to be called options. So if we say options equals open square bracket and then close that square bracket off, anything we write in here is basically a list. It's gonna be a list of values that can be selected from in this settings menu. So I'll show you what that means right now. We'll just type in some text and then you separate these list values, these list entries using a comma. So if I say some text, uh, other value, and then final option, if I click save here, we come up to the settings menu, this cog icon. We now have this drop down box next to string. And there's a number of things you can do with this type of input. You could use this to set, uh, for example, another symbol. So say you wanted to plot data on your chart on Euro dollar here from, let's say the S and P 500. Don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can with this sort of function here. We'll go over that in more advanced lessons, but just, there you go. That's how you would get a list of string inputs to show up in your settings menu here. Now, if I get rid of these get rid of this line and save it to chart and we go up here now you can type whatever you want in here so you know whatever you whatever you feel like and then you see up here in the indicators values it's changed the text so if that didn't make sense to you just go over this video a couple of times i'll cover arrays in a future video because they they can be quite complex compared to what we've covered so far so we'll go over that in the next video today's video i'll just leave this as this because I want to keep it simple. So if we go down here now, this is going to be a little bit complex. You can ignore this part if you want to. I'm just going to draw this to the chart just to show you that we can interact with this string input. So first of all, I'm going to use this if this is a good example of an if statement. So I'm going to say if bar state is last, what that means is that if the current candle that we're calculating the script on is the last bar 
in price action, so this current bar, then this next few lines of code will be executed. We're going to create a label example, and the label example is going to be set to label.new, so we're creating a new label. The location of the label is going to be the current bar index, which will be the current bar. If you were to type current uh, bar index minus two, then that will draw this label two bars back from the current bar, but we don't want to do that in this case. Um, the next input is not relevant, so we're going to put in NA. And then the next input after these two is string input. That's going to draw our string that we've just created up here. Then we can set the color. I'll set the color to color.green. Now this is the color of the label itself. And then we can also set the text color. So I'll set the text color to color.white. And then I'm going to set the style to label.style label down. Uh, there's a couple of different styles you can go over, um, such as uh, style, label left, label right, label up, none, square, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to go with label down for now. And then the Y location is where on this Y axis do you want it? Do you want it above the bar or do you want it below the bar? So in this case, we're going to set it to Y location, Y lock dot above bar. And now that's our label created. If I hit save, so I've got a couple of errors here. I've done a few typos, done a couple of whoopsies. Let's have a look. I have, first of all, I misspelled example because it's early in the morning and I'm like that early in the morning. I've also forgot to put style in front of this option. So yeah, another example of what happens when you're not paying attention with your coding, you'll get errors, but at least the errors tell you what's going wrong. That's the best thing about PineScript and how easy it is to use and learn. So this should work theoretically. If I save now, it should add a label to the end. And there we go. There's our label. That's the end of this script and this lesson. To just recap, I'll just say real quickly what we've done here. So first we created a Boolean input. We used the input function. We, we titled it Boolean. So if I open the settings menu, We've got Boolean here. We can set that to true or false, and that will move the plotting of our Boolean value, which is assigned here to one or zero based on whether this Boolean is true or false. Um, sorry, it's this red line that's moving, not this purple line. I don't know. It looks like the purple line's moving, but if you look down on this right axis, you can see that the red line is plotting zero, and if I turn it to true, it's plotting one. Uh, the next thing we did was create an integer input. So if I adjust this, this will move the blue line at the top. And it adjusts the scale of the right axis, obviously, when we change this value. Um, the next thing we did was create a float input, a floating decimal point input. And that's plotting the purple line. So this one in the middle. So if we change this to, say, 1.1, it will go down here above, just above our boolean input but change it to 1.01 .01. you can see you can get quite a fair bit of precision precision here so you can see here we've got one two three four five decimal points on this euro dollar so you could have one two three four five decimal numbers after the decimal point that's it for today's lesson i hope you found it valuable hope it wasn't too overwhelming um, just watch this video a couple more times if it didn't make sense to you or feel free to leave any questions in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Uh, but that's it for basic user inputs. We'll use this information in future videos. So make sure you practice with this in the meantime. Thank you for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great week. Trade green. Good luck with your coding. Take it easy guys. Goodbye.